Hello and welcome to this Money Control interview. We are in conversation with Sridhar Vengu, the founder and CEO of Zoho. He is in Bengaluru for a change. Thank you very much, Sridhar, for talking to Money Control. Let me begin with your newest offering, which you are ramping up, Zoho Click. Uh, I think during the press conference, you know the way we understood it, that it's going to marry Slack and Zoom. Yeah. Tell us about the opportunity you see there, because you know with. return to office work from office um the these tools are not as hot as they were say one or two years ago so what opportunities do you see here for you yeah. first of all thank you for uh, being here sundar namaskar namaskar sir uh, mm-hmm. so if you look at that landscape you have one extreme of everybody working in a centralized offices then you had everybody working from home mm-hmm. those two extremes we've saw but actually we have to find the happy medium that is where zoho zoho corp itself is heading as a company we are launching this hub and spoke offices like we just i just went to our coimbatore uh, palladam office a few weeks ago i was in vurgcheri in tanjavur and i have visited our uh, tirunelveli office of course i am in tenkasi yeah. hmm. myself madurai kapalur we have an office coming up all the sankottarakara and kerala i mentioned all these are part of our strategy for the hub and spoke model centered around rural areas where there's one dominant hub office the smaller satellite offices around this model is very viable mm. that people work in not necessarily work from home because that long term has issues mm. of cultural and uh, acculturation bringing new people on board all that but really the small offices work mm. we have 20 30 people connected to a larger office maybe 500 or 1000 people that model is very viable this model really needs the tools to go with it. Hmm. for example i may have like a, a, a five or 10 uh, people r and d team in my village and i have to connect with a broader r and d team in tenkasi itself or in chennai and this is actually true it's a real example for me i have like three separate teams one working with me in my village one in the tenkasi hub and one in chennai how do we collaborate this is where really click comes in in fact we uh, tailored it for this type of problem and i think this is increasingly relevant we are because you know bengaluru take the example last week we had what 3 hour traffic jam <laughs> yes and if we are already at 1.2 crore population do we want to double this do we want to triple this these are questions we must ask what is our development model where should companies go and same thing in mumbai i was in dharavi 2 weeks ago and it's the highest population density mm-hmm. probably in the world entire world do we want to add more people there On, on Mumbai, broader Mumbai. So I think that's why we need to spread our job space around. It's very critical that it's not just factories that go, but also R and D capabilities that go. And these R and D capabilities we can build only if we have seamless platforms around. And that's why this click rooms, for example, we launched. It's very easy collaboration. You see your colleagues on a large TV. Correct. You have very large TVs, and your mobile phone itself acts as your microphone and speaker. So this is about as easy as it gets. In fact, I'm going to set it up right now in my village. Very soon. Got it. So. Got it. Um, what's your broader vision for uh, Zoho Shidhar? Because you know this has evolved in so many ways, right? From a workspace suite to uh, this offering. You're also talking about the hardware side on LLMs and servers, um, and I think you've also experimented with Zoho Meet and yeah. Aratai. So you know when one has to step back and look at everything that you're doing. what's the common factor or is it you know that you're integrating the hardware and the software because that marriage has to happen so that you have control over every part uh, h- how should one visualize the larger vision it comes from the sheer complexity and the breadth and depth of technologies we depend on hmm. to work and to live today it's not something that we created this complexity we depend on a large number of tools to get our work done in the office and also even at home now mm. and these technologies are also merging like whatsapp is used for both for business and and at, at you know, for our personal use so these and in the same way you have smart tvs and they are integrated with our work we are integrating with work right so all of these that's what necessitates all this technologies and what we want to be is a broad spectrum a technology provider that brings state of the art technology but at some very affordable and accessible price points to the global audience mm. and global i mean really global that's you know the middle east 
in Latin America and Africa, we have a very large you know, growing customer base now. And our growth strategy is about bringing all this technology together. There's a lot of heavy capability, R&D we have to build, and a lot of nifty system integration. This again, this click rooms is an example of that integration. The smart TV, phone, and with the cloud, all that nicely integrated. You don't realize they are integrated so well. So that is the type of thing we bring to this. It just works. That's in, in Steve Jobs' famous phrase, it just works. That's what we are aiming for. Hmm. But, you know, looking at the global situation, I saw your post last week where you, you know, uh, sort of raised a, a, a cautionary alarm on uh, the demand for SaaS. Again, is that a North America problem? Because we are seeing pockets of concern emerge everywhere. everywhere. You know, uh, Ukraine, Russia are still on. This week we started a new war in um, uh, uh, in the Middle East yes, yeah. uh, region. So um, how are you sort of insulating yourself? Does it help to also have a vibrant India market, a growing India market? Yeah. Our uh, start with India first. Hmm. We have our strongest growth has been in India. Mm -hmm. for quite some time and India growth is continuing. We are actually still seeing tremendous growth. While the global growth has slowed down, particularly in the developed world. Mm -hmm. So that is US, EU, all of the, the growth has slowed down. China, for example, what is happening in China is really a bust at this point. Mm -hmm. You can see the real estate bust, the infrastructure uh, companies getting in trouble, all of that in China. So the news, economic news coming out of China is very grim. And that is driving a lot of the global slowdown as well because commodity, all of that, every, everybody dependent on China for demand, for the infrastructure, all that. So that growth is coming down now. And this places near-term challenges for everyone. And now the war just adds a new dimension, an unpredictable dimension. We just cannot know. Oil prices, for example. But we are still bullish on India. But the key here is we have to build the domestic capabilities. Hmm. And you mentioned the word insulate. Really, I will use the word resilient. Mm. Indian economy has to become more resilient. And the only way become, we become resilient is to become much more self-reliant, the whole Atmanirbhar uh, movement. To, to critical technologies, we have to acquire capabilities here. That is the key and that we are contributing our part there. That's how we think of ourselves. Since you mentioned critical technologies, do you think India missed the whole AI uh, wave? Because if you look at what's happening in the US, hundreds of millions of dollars being plowed into startups. If you look at UAE strategy, China strategy, they've, you know, been buying up chips. I think NVIDIA has a backlog of a yeah. year to cater to some of these countries. Where are we here? Yeah, um, I wouldn't say India, this is the bus so much has been, a, so you can say that about Germany or Japan hmm. or any of them, South Korea, they would all say, oh, maybe we missed the bus too. I don't see it that way. I see it as we have to catch up on these capabilities, and we will. And part of it is, see, in, in sometimes you get overhyped. Now, there is a, for example, even already you see the AI tools, the usage has come down hmm. since from the peak. So I think it's true for all of us. It's true. We started using it heavily, and then we, you know, our usage intensity has come down. Now I think move to the application layer yes. because Google is integrating it into all its products. Right. Meta is integrating it into. Yeah. All and definitely that will continue and we hmm. are doing that integration. But I'm saying that the hype will wear hmm. off a little bit. Durable uses will be found. Hmm. We still have important technology challenges. First is the hallucination problem to solve. Copyright hmm. and privacy protection. Both are really linked intellectual property. Because you cannot just in the name of AI violate randomly everybody's copyright and all of that. That's also important. For example, when it emits code, was it really just simply regurgitating some code it already memorized? Yeah. And companies that use that code, will we be held liable for violating somebody's IP? These are fundamental questions. These are not, you know, simply just because it's a magical new tool, these questions don't, you know, get automatically resolved. So this is where, you know, a lot of work has to happen. And I think there is time to catch up on all of this. Have enterprises banned you from using ChatGPT for work? Because I've heard this happen in some companies. Uh, definitely people want the ability to turn it off. And mm. we are, we no, in fact, we give them the option to turn it on. We don't just say we use it default. You turn it on. That's what we are doing. So. Got it. Shita, just last few minutes. Uh, I think the last time we um, uh, spoke to you, you were talking about uh, how Zoho is building its own large language model. Um, can you give us an update on that? So right now we are focused on very domain-specific models. Hmm. You see the, the, the broad LLMs, 
that's out there, like the chat GPT or Google bot, all that, they are now rumored to be in the trillion parameter range, not just hundreds of billions, but towards a trillion. At that point, they are memorizing everything. They are memorizing everything that humans have ever created. And, uh, but when you come to specific domains, whether it's an accountant domain, legal domain, medical domain, smaller models can do the same job. Hmm. So domain specific models are where we are focused on right now because that's pragmatic, because that they require smaller models, therefore smaller GPU count, all that. Because often the, 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 the scaling is not linear. Some of these, for example, there's an N squared scaling here, where the, the you throw large number of parameters, the, it's not just simply linear scaling at that point. So you have to have uh, uh, you know, uh, a GPU strategy. The pragmatic strategy, given the reality that GPUs are in short supply, is to focus on these domain-specific models. That's where we are focused on. And next, we are also working with AMD. Hmm. They are coming up with new Got GPUs. It. And uh, that's a lot of excitement around AMD. We are working in that area as well. So have, are you planning to acquire compute or uh, to train? Definitely, as we, because we have to make sure the models work on AMD. That's something that requires software work. And AMD also has to come out with the chips hmm. they have announced and they are, they'll be soon in the market. So those are all things that we act in the future, but we are working on this actively. From a regulation standpoint, um, we recently spoke to you know Arvind Krishna of IBM, Jensen of NVIDIA, and they stressed on this point on AI sovereignty for yeah. India. Um, what are your views on this? I'd say broader technology sovereignty for India. Mm -hmm. Because we are, as a large nation, with 23 million kids born every year, that's the number I focus on. Mm -hmm. China only 9 million. I so think we have to think about, about declining birth rates. And yeah. we have to think about that. That means we are twice China plus an America plus a Japan thrown in. That's what this size yes. of India's talent pool, that's what we should think. And that means we should aim to do all of the technologies because we are we have the people and we have to create the jobs for our young people. So working on this technology is a very good job to have. So that's why I think on the, that's on the supply side that we have the talent pool to aspire to this. And then on the other side, it also builds resilience that we don't have to be threatened by somebody, they'll cut off the technology for mm. you, all that. And we don't, you know, our history tells us that we should not assume that, you know, the global and black drop will be always favorable to us. Because we have a history, thousand year history of this. So which is why we have to have technology sovereignty. That should be our strategy, technology sovereignty. And not just AI, but in, you know, whether it's drones, whether it's medical equipment, advanced biotech, you name it, nanotech, we have to have a technology sovereignty strategy. Got it. Last question, Sridhar. Um, if you can give us, you know, um, an outlook for the SaaS space as such, is it going to be yet another year of, um, you know, not so great growth, not so great hiring, funding at least, I don't think, I, I can't remember the last time we saw a SaaS unicorn, forget any unicorn. Yeah. So how is the next year going to pan out? Um, so there is a short term, of course, the funding hmm. winter, all that. Long term consolidation. See, I've long, long ago, I talked about consolidation. Consolidation you know, as SAS, in all this vertical SaaS, horizontal SaaS, which, which... Even, part? see, from a typical business to enterprise point of view, they don't want to have too many vendors. They don't have to manage 600 SaaS vendors, that thing, right? It's just thought. And then the integrating all this. And so I do this, you do this, integrating all this. They want the tools to work together. Mm. And they ideally, they want fewer vendors in the pipeline. That is what is driving it. So there is a there is the the demand side too, right? How many customers, how many vendors would a, uh, an enterprise want to have? So that means inevitably we are going to have consolidation, and that consolidation is a long term backdrop. The short term funding aside, the consolidation is coming, and that's what I predict. And I predicted this before, and we still we see smaller acquisitions happening, but you still have. A lot of consolidation ahead. Are you looking at acquisitions? We may do it, but I'm. We, because we you've usually have, built everything. We have house. not grown through acquisition before. That's because the you know the the way the VC backdrop is valuation were too bloated. Yeah. People are throwing money at it. Yeah. When and sanity returns, we might look at acquisitions. Understood. Thank you yeah. very Thank much. You. For Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.